here. We're, we're, we're using a whole lot of information. So, so if, if you're looking at something that would conform to a bell curve, you would think that if you had the more data that you had, the more smooth looking the shape would look and the, and the more you can be kind of certain that it looks like it follows a bell curve type of distribution. So we're gonna go, okay, that looks like a bell curve kind of does the thing. I'm gonna move this off to the side and let's start to build an actual uh, bell curve. So I'm gonna say, let's say that this is gonna be uh, X. This is our X. This is gonna be P of X, let's say. I'm gonna make this black and white. So we're gonna go home tab, font group, making this black and this white, and then I'll center it. And then let's make a skinny X, skin up, skinny up the X. It's on the lighter side of our bell curve. It's, it weighs less because it's skinny. It's a skinny X. But it could be skinny with big bones, you know, it just has, but any case. So now we're going to say, okay, well, what, what am I going to start? Because I'm measuring in pounds. I could start from like one pound and go up to like, I don't know, 500 pounds or something. Uh, but it's, I don't probably need to go that far because it's not likely that someone weighs one pound. So what's the range that I need on my X's that are going to be on the X parameter? So I could say, well, everything, let's do that four standard deviations again. That should pick up almost everything in four standard deviations. So let's go that we're going to say the numbers of, of standard deviations, which I'm just going to say SDs in our chart, the number of X's that we want are going to be equal to uh, well, let's four, let's just say four of them. <laughs> and so that means that the lower X and then the upper X we can calculate. So the lower X is gonna be the mean, the middle point, minus the standard deviation, 1166 times four of them to go, to go four standard deviations. And we're gonna say, okay, boom. So we've got 80, so, I, so people don't weigh less than 80 oftentimes, right? And then we're gonna say pounds, we're talking pounds. I know if, the, if you're not in the United States, you're like, what are you talking about? Or what, why a pound, what in the world? But whatever, that's how we do it, man. So now we're gonna say the upper one is gonna be 127 uh, plus a standard deviation times four and enter. So now uh, 173 pounds is gonna be our upper end. Okay, and so now let's, let's just build this. I'm gonna say this is gonna be an X of, let's go from starting point is just gonna be one less than this one or, or 80, you know, at the lower end. I'm gonna get rid of the decimals because I'm not gonna do the decimals here. I'm just gonna take it to the whole pounds and I'm gonna drag it, well, let's do 81 so we can see the pattern, get rid of the decimals. Select those two, I'm gonna drag it down to 174. 174, and that should be good. So I'm gonna drag it down until I get the pattern down to 174. That doesn't even fit me, man, I'm, because I'm yoked up. What about my someone like me that's like huge, like Arnold Schwarzenegger, but not now because he's old, but like when he was, I'm not, you know, when he was not old. No, anyways. Uh, so now we're gonna say P of X, we're gonna say this equals then norm.dist. So we've seen this in prior presentations. So we're just gonna take the norm.dist. I, I won't do the spill function this time. I'll just do the normal process. So I'm gonna take the X comma, the mean, the mean is outside the data we're working in. So I'm gonna F for it, making it absolute. So it will copy down uh, and not move that cell down, comma, the standard deviation is that one. Again, it's outside the data I'm working with. I don't want it to move down. So I'm gonna select F4, dollar sign before the F and the three, making it absolute, comma, cumulative, not cumulative, false or zero, and then enter. I'm gonna percentify it, home, dan home tab, number group, percentify. You better percentify if you want to recognize. I still don't recognize, it's still zero. But if I double click on the fill handle, copies it down, and there we have it. Now, if I, if I was to total this up, total, and say alt equals to sum, trusty sum formula, we get one or 100, because basically all the data is in there. All right, so that looks good. 
and so so now I'm going to say, <clears throat> okay, uh, so so now let's ask. Well, let's see how closely that fits to our actual data now. Now remember, our actual data is actual samples, not given to us in percents. So I want to either adjust my actual data to percents or adjust this curve to actual data, right? So first I've got to take all of my information here and group it together. And that's going to be our frequency. So this is going to be the actual frequency, actual frequency. And then I'll wrap that home tab alignment, wrap it, center it, black, white. So, so this is going to be the one where we're going to say the frequency is going to tell us everything for example this one that is above 80 up to and including 81 is going to go into that bucket when we count our actual data all right so we're going to use our frequency which is a spill array function frequency tab i'm just going to select all of our data with the little arrow selecting all of the data comma and then i'm going to select all of my x's by putting my cursor on the top x control shift and down arrow don't want to pick the total so i'm just going to say shift up and then control backspace to get up to the top without the dancing frequency ants uh stopping their frequency dance and then i'm going to say enter and boom spills it on down so these are the number of of occurrences of these datas that are are in between 100 in this case or above 100 up to and including 101. I don't want it to it spill down a little one more than I wanted it to go. So I'm going to double click here. I'm going to get rid of that last one so it spills out right to there. Now if I sum this up, how do I know it picked up all my numbers? Well, if I say alt equals down here summing it up, it comes out to 25,000 and I could say does that equal my count? of data right I can check my actual count and say how many data points do I have over here imagining these are our bunch of data that we actually counted right so we're gonna say this is gonna be count I'm just gonna say count all of my data how many are there there's 25,000 we picked up all 25,000 are represented in one of these buckets so that looks good check confirmed so now I can either convert my percentages to counts by multiplying all the percentages by 25,000 then I can then I can compare my actual to my to my uh, the, 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 the smooth curve or I can convert which is probably the better thing to do the actual frequency to the percent by taking the percent of the total and I'm gonna say let's go home tab numbers black white wrap it center it and I'm going to do